time in the season that we celebrate, um, we acknowledge, we celebrate through our lifestyle um, the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior. Uh, throwing a party for him don't mean much. You leave the party and act like you're somebody else's child. We, as the children of God, we do not celebrate Easter in any form, way, or fashion. Um, it is not just a worldly holiday. It does have meaning. It is the worship of another god, a goddess uh, that represents sex and beauty and things of that nature. I'm sure you've done the research. You're not one that's so easily uh, gulped by the world's, you know, idea of what this season is. It's not that we call it something different. The children of God do not celebrate Easter. You understand that? I've had pastors to contact me asking me what's the difference between Easter and resurrection. No, not pastors. So there is a great need uh, for, you know, understanding and enlightenment. Um, it's just, again, it's not, it's not we call it something different. We don't celebrate it. You understand that? And you have to research it. I shouldn't have to explain. And that's what I tell a lot of pastors. One pastor was asking me the difference between being called a Christian and a child of God. And my response to him is, anything that comes from the Catholic Church, you need to examine before you accept the label. One of the most ruthless and evil religious organizations in all the world is the Catholic Church. And it's only your ignorance that would make you say otherwise. There's Catholic churches now in Africa. I don't understand. As ignorance. And, and we have to get to the point that we want to be informed. We had, uh, I don't, I like to acknowledge pastors because I'm there to help, especially all of my sons and daughters in Africa and Kenya, where God has, has called me to do a work in regards to, uh, oh God, no, I, it slipped me. What is it I said? Oh, 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 oh. I forget it's something I said in regards to, uh, 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 oh man, it'll come back to me. But I was going to address it, I forgot it. And so when it did come back, maybe next Sunday I'll address it. But I always want pastors to understand uh, the difference, you know, in things that I say. I don't just say things. You have to research. It's not for me to just keep telling you. Research. Research. You have one pastor, she reached out to me and she said, you know, I really want to know the truth. Um, in regards to being called a Christian and a child of God and the difference between, uh, oh, 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 about black Jesus. And the pastor said, why does it matter? Um, and the thing is, this is what you have to understand. You know, if you're going to honor me, honor me. That's right. Don't, don't, don't listen to me now, huh? I'm my skin, but I'm, you know, you, if, if you put some music on, you'll see I'm black. But, um, you know, the, if you're going to wait 300 years later and say we're going to celebrate Pastor Hatchet, and then you're going to put a picture of Deacon Holden up there. The white guy is not Jesus. That's it, it's a lie. It's a constant thing the Catholic Church has put into motion and to distort the truth. Amen. Amen. Jesus is not white. He was not pale skinned. The only pale skinned people you see in the Bible were cursed people. Yes. Why are black people so dumb and ignorant to the fact that Jesus was black? Amen. Yeah. It's true. And I don't care nothing about you. Y'all just get caught up in whatever the world says. You know, this thing about Jerusalem and stuff. I, I'm bewildered at the number of people that don't know Jesus wasn't, but he was born in Bethlehem. Jesus was a Palestinian. Amen. Do you know, even to this day, the people in Jerusalem hate the people in Palestine. Where Jesus is from. You're ignorant. Learn something. Read something. Stop just grabbing the mic and preaching. Learn something, please. So we have to get to the point that we know truth and we talk truth. He 
said, well, God know my heart. The priest said, why does it matter as long as we walk in? If it, if it don't matter, why push a lot? Right. Say, where you was at? It don't matter. I'm home now. <laughs> no, man. I don't care what y'all say, man. God is still God. So we take this time to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. I've never been a seasonal preacher. I'm not one to look at the season and preach. I always have to preach what God tells me. So, you know, don't, you know, this is the time where we hoop and holler and get him up out the grave. You know, we talk about what happened the first night and the conversation he had with Moses and Elijah in the celebration in the second night and then the third night. The third night, he took a nap. Because I got to get up in the morning. Y'all don't know that. Y'all don't know that about that, huh? Boy, I used to get Jesus up in so many different ways. Boy, I'm telling you. Boy, you be going to die to see if you can get up somewhere. But, but we celebrate that. But I got to get into the Word of God. I know God wants to bless you. All right? I love you. You know about Africa. We know that we're, we're having a conference. We are making some adjustments. And uh, we're going to announce them. Don't think adjustments in the conference is that we don't know what we're doing. We're learning, we're growing, we're hearing, and we're applying. And that's what's going to make it so awesome. Let's get into the Word of God. Somebody shout, I love the Word. I love the Word. Amen, amen, amen. You know, Jesus is getting up means something. Amen. Yes. And most of us, you know, I'm telling the preacher, you know, they do outreach, and which is good. But outreach means so little if the purpose of Jesus being in your life is not seen. Loud speakers outside is not outreach. If you want to really win people to Jesus, try winning. Amen. That's it. No, because I mean like you're loud and you're screaming at people and you're stirring up emotion and you're telling people to come to Jesus. And my answer would be, oh, excuse me, sir, for what? Right, right. <laughs> You know, it has to have purpose, and we need to see victory in your life. Amen. That's right. No one obeys God and live a defeated life. Amen. Right. No one. No one. No one. So let's get into the word. We're going to finish up what we left off last week. Let's go to Matthew 5 and 13. We'll go to Matthew 5 13. Who you are means everything. God can't get glory without us. So our role means something. Amen. What we do in the, in, in the earth. Now, you know, a group of us have really just committed ourselves, talking about some pastors from Kissy and myself, the first place we committed ourselves to really devote some time to God and to suppress our flesh and really seek God. And one of the things God said to me is the spirit in which you do things for me. I need you to have not only the words, but I need you to have the spirit. Y'all know it as a vibe. Y'all know it, you know, the, and the aura or whatever. But God is saying when I tell you to do something for me, I not only need you to act it out, I not only need you to say it, I need you to have my heart because that makes a difference. See, you can't, if God tell you to hold your peace, the biggest destruction, I'm not talking about foolishness now, but the biggest destruction of most marriages is pride, ego, stubbornness. Amen. Yeah. And, and when God tell you to be quiet, you got to be quiet with the right spirit because to be quiet and plot a comeback to be quiet and be cussing in your mind, you know, you got to have the right spirit. And that's what we have to push. The next level is not only to hear God, but with the spirit of God, we, 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 we do what he said. Amen. Let nothing God tell you to do rob you of your joy. This is important. Amen. Because oftentimes we get instructions that clash with our flesh and we feel sad or depressed. But when God tell you to do something for him, don't get depressed. Fight that. Resist that. Amen. It's the end result that you don't believe in. So you have to know, I keep my joy because the end result is I win. Matthew 5 and 13, when we read 5, 13 through 16, I want to show you something. When the Bible said, you are the salt of the earth. But if a salt has lost its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? There are things you can do that you are no longer any good for your original purpose. No, no, listen to me. God has a purpose for you, but you're in control of it. True. God has a purpose for you. Don't override your, your right to choose. Amen. You have a right to choose 
whether or not you're going to obey God. Whether or not. It's not like I'm going to do what I want and I'll come back 50 years later and then I'll do my purpose. There's something you can do today Amen. that will make you null and void concerning your original plan. And this is why it's very careful that once we come to God, you understand, because the devil will keep you ignorant that you'll be celebrating Easter. But the moment I find out what Easter is, I need to now change. Right, true. Amen. You understand that? Because all along, God, God has purpose for your life, but the devil is plotting and scheming, trying to get you off course. I'm about to say something. It's going to hurt your feelings. Most of us ref is a reflection of our community and upbringing than our relationship with God. The house we grew up in, the family we had. I was born and raised over the bar barbershop. We were born in the hospital, which y'all understand what I'm saying. So, so, so there's a lot of things I got from the barbershop that, that impact me, that change me. And, and when I come to God, I have to evaluate those things. I have to evaluate anything that I was brought up with whether or not this is who God was talking to before he made me a man in my mother's womb. I was talking to my wife this morning. I was like, God's plan is so under attack and there's so many different things going on. Things that you do. That's why you can't point the finger. But there's things you've embraced that's against God's plan. And you think you're right because you like it that way. Amen. But now they're, they're literally fighting that gender is no longer a part of a birth certificate. No, this is a real fight. That is no longer a boy or a girl. It's just a person or an uh, individual. I don't know what they want. See, now listen to me. You can be whatever you want to be. You have that right. But why are you constantly attacking the plan of God in what you want? Amen. And, and you have to understand Whatever the world do, let them do it. Go on. We, we don't have to make no signs talking about what it is and what it's supposed to be. Amen. You be right. Amen. Amen. You be right. You raise your family right. Because in the last days, there's going to be a great falling away. Great falling away. And there is no submission to fill up seats. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. Let me get into this. But if, but if you start hoeing, you can't be a queen. I'm sorry, it says, and if you lost your saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. No, you don't you don't go from pimp to preacher overnight. Right, right. Come on. There has to be something that changes in you. That's right. right. You said, oh, that's my testimony. Well, see, it becomes your testimony. When you overcome. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. But I'm about to tell you something. As long as you can ever go back when you start losing, you know, I'm down on my luck, you know, I got to go back to my own way. As long as that door is open, it ain't a testimony. Right. You just ain't getting it no longer. That's right. Go on with yourself. I see some of y'all mad. <laughs> so, if the woman is lose her saltiness, how can she be salty again? If a man become no good, you know my wife and I were talking about a no good for another man. You'd be surprised what your flesh is attracted to. It go both ways. Like I was telling my wife, God don't come, God don't hang out with punks in marriages. He said, Well, you know, I'm not I'm the man, I'm the I'm the male in the marriage, but you know, she's just on she's on my level. We we, we just, that sounds fair. That sounds modern. But you're the lead. Amen. And when your wife starts leading, God don't come in marriages where Jezebel is the boss. Right. That's true. When I was coming up, they told me Jezebel wore lipstick, makeup, right. short dresses. You know, that was Jezebel. Mm -hmm. No, Jezebel is a woman that's the boss in the house. Right. Mm -hmm. true. So, so she said, well, then some men go too far. They become dominant. That's an insecure man. Amen. That's a man that have to abuse his wife to make up his shortcomings. I would tell you what, what some of the guys call it. But, you know, <laughs> we, we, man, you can't, you can't mess up your wife's 
image because you insecure. Exactly. Amen. So true. All right? So, so, so there are things that you lose that the process. Now, I'm about to say something to you. Get this. If you don't hear God not to jump in the pool, what makes you think you're going to hear while you're drowning? Because I want to live. So you think obeying God as long as I get what I want is right. But obeying God not to get in the mess, his grace and mercy. No. There are some things you can do and you go drink. You hear me? All right? It is no longer good for nothing. She can't be queen no more. Except to be thrown out and trodden underfoot. Come on. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hit. Come on. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Come on, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and you get no credit for it. All glory belong to him. Yeah. See, as long as you're seeking compensation for your good deeds, you now are not putting yourself in a position for God to get gold. Mm -hmm. You want something out of this deal. And this is what God wants us to deal with is you being a conduit for him. You being an ambassador for him. And last week we talked about people want God to do something to them and for them and God calls you to do something through you. There are so many people that don't love God. They don't know God. They don't have a relationship with God. And as a result, they think God is here to give me what I want, what I need. My job, my house, my relationship. But what are you giving? What are you doing for God that I'm going to do and nobody and nothing will stop me? You got to question your motives and what you do. Because as long as it's going to benefit you, you have to question yourself on whether you're doing it to glorify God. I do not own a trucking company to glorify God. I own a trucking company to make money to take care of my family. Amen. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. There are things you do to make money. There are things you do that people now, you will be a blessing to by God's choice. Now that money that I make is to take care of my family, but if God tells me to take some of that money and do something with it, I use it for his glory. Amen. Amen. The purpose of the job is to give me money to take care of my family. If God tells me to go and do something else, I have no right to try to get a benefit from the money God has orchestrated away from me. That's true. Amen. People don't, people don't care nothing about what God wants to do through them. They only care about what God wants to do through me. That's why that's how we motivate people to give. How many in here want God to do something special for him? <laughs> how many here right now? The devil is on your track. Put ten dollars in your hand. Put ten dollars in your hand. I hear the Holy Ghost say, "Put ten dollars in your hand." You're a holy life. <laughs> Bring it to the altar quickly, quick, quick, quick. Move, move, move. I hear the Spirit say, "Move, move." <laughs> you might say, "I don't have ten. If you got five, five, some, find somebody else with five, and the both of y'all walk up here together. Who's <laughs> quick? is going and everybody's excited and you just threw away $10. Right, right. <laughs> right, that's true. See, here's the thing. If you start getting caught up in emotion, you can never please God. Amen. You can never please God. And you can't expect God, I'm going to give it, I'm just going to trust God. No, you should have trust God before it even hits your hand Amen. that you can know what to even do with it. If I gave to every beggar, man, I'd be broke. Right. Y'all be saying, that's why are you at the bus stop? I'm, well, I'm going home. <laughs> Everybody wants something they're not willing to work for. 
So, so God say, I got purpose for you, but there are things you can do that make what your purpose is null and void. Now, God will do some things through you if you don't get you out the way. When a person put themselves in the way, it's usually because they're consumed with earthly gratification, worldly gratification. You want too much for you. He said, he'd give me my heart's desire. But when your heart has been perverted, No, see, perverted hearts, that scripture's not for. You overlook all the other scriptures. Right. You know, people say, you know, the Bible, the Bible tells women to shut up in the church. But do you know what that means when Paul told the women to be quiet? Right. He was trying to bring order. Mm -hmm. right. And at that time, one man could have three, four wives. Mm -hmm. So if, listen, uh, the man is the head of the house. I want all the women to be quiet in this meeting. Men, you you sound what your opinion is, and then when you go home, you talk to your family about it. And then we'll come back, we'll we'll convene back here, and we'll know what we're gonna do. It wasn't that the woman didn't have a voice in the church. He had to establish all of them. Hey, run off, run off with that. The Bible says submit one to another. All we got was wives submit to your husband. Right. And we're wrong with it. Right. You got to listen, you can't pick and choose what benefit me. Amen. Whatever God give me, it got to change my life. Amen. The fight, the faith fight is me doing what God say, not me getting what I want. Amen. Let me get through this. I'm gonna get through this today. Wanting God to do something through you is the heart of God. Most people will spend a lifetime with God and never ask God to do something for them, for other people. Some of y'all can't be trusted with no money. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you rob God, ain't no telling what you do for me. Right. I'm out here hungry. I mean, come on. See, y'all don't see it. Y'all think grace and mercy make me do what I want to do when I want to do it. And then people will say, well, you know, I don't have to pay tithes. I do other things. Mm -hmm. What well, the Bible say? Then, well, that's the Bible. No, because, see, this is why this morning God said gave a word so powerful. Whatever you got a loud voice about that's in your closet, have that same loud voice when it's going toward other people. Because there's some stuff on you that need to be correct. Amen. You need to examine yourself. That's why you know I can sit here and preach and this is free. Because I don't get in people's business. I just say what God tells me to do. Now, when the word hits you, don't talk about you ain't my business. No, am I in your business? Right. You robbed that bank, you going to jail. Right. <laughs> you're not a tie payer. If you're not a tie payer, you don't talk to God about money. That's all. God don't love you. You still can go to heaven not being a tie payer. Right. But you don't qualify to talk to God about money. Right. Your business, your financial structure, your do you hear me? You already said, I don't trust you. Right. Hey, this guy come up in here and he ain't did nothing. I woke up on my own. I set my own alarm clock. I got the job. I put the 40 hours in. And you want 10%? Sound like a crook to me. Okay, I'm I cool. I was all right. I hear you. Right. I tell you. I don't, I don't need you to trust me for me to be God. Right. I bet that I mean I don't trust you. And not to trust God means I think you're a liar or you're just trying to get my money. You're trying to hustle me. But my car broke down. Uh -uh. <laughs> Why would you come to a lawyer? Right. To help you with your car. Right. Why would you come to a lawyer for a better job? See now God don't love you whether you pay tithes or not. But not paying tithes now don't qualify you to talk to God about money. See, you think God's kindness means you get to do what you want, but you a fool. Amen. Amen. You have to learn my actions bring about a, a, a repercussion. Good, bad, or indifferent. What I saw, I'm going to reap something. Amen. Oh, my God. So when God is doing something through you, I'm not the most important person in my life. That's why Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Amen. Well, that cross ain't for other people. People walking, hey, hey, how y'all doing? I got a cross for you. I got a cross for you. Is that red with your cross? Oh, red don't need a cross. Mm -hmm. No, at some point, you're going to have to die. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not 
telling you to do this, but I want you to understand the concept. You don't need to have five cars and people that are attached. I'm not talking about people, just anybody. People that are attached to you are walking. You know, real men, you know, I know most, some, some males can't identify with what I'm saying. But, you know, real men always see their wife as the weaker vessel when it comes to protection. For instance, for y'all get bullheaded. I don't need no man to take me out. Calm down. <laughs> y'all about to leave home. She going to work. You going to work. Her tire is wobbling a little bit. What car you take? The one that's wobbling. That's just man. That's a man. That's man insane. If that joker jump in his car, and be like, just call him when you get to work. You got a punk on your hand. You got a sissy on your hand. You need to get rid of him as soon as the opportunity presents. He said, my car keep cutting off at the light. What he goes? What a real man gonna say? Take my car. See what what the deal is. Because you, I can't even think of me being comfortable today knowing that car can cut off with my wife in it. Right. I didn't think it'd get that quiet. Right. Right. Real men respond to, to, to a situation that say, you know, I need to let the problem fall on me. A real man don't a real man don't walk around with a hoodie on and a jacket and your wife over there shaking. I told you to bring a jacket. I told you. They take the jacket off, they're gonna cut you out. Because I told you to bring a jacket. Now you out here and I got to be cold, comfy. <laughs> see, see, you listen to me. You have to understand there are things that God do through us. People that are attached to you, you have to be a conduit. It's not about what you can get. That is a satisfaction of working so hard that you exhaust it when you know the benefit of the job ain't for you, but it's for the people attached to you. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Listen to me. So God wants you to be a conduit. He needs to do things through you. Listen to me carefully. You are obey. And selfish. When you are constantly coming to God for you. Right. You and your wife. Right. You and your kids. Right. You and your husband. Me and my job. Me, 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 me. You, you're obeyed and you're selfish. Now what does that mean? It doesn't mean that God don't love you. It's just telling you what you qualify for. Right. Right. I be telling my grandson many times. I said, stop. I've got to do this work. I can do payroll. You don't pay these people that come to the house. He said, give me, come on here, let's go. Lady from New York. I said, Papa, I got to do this. I, I got to submit this invoice or we ain't going to get paid. Yeah, I don't care about that. <laughs> Get over here and sing with me when I beat this drum here. <laughs> no. You see, he, he's a babe and he is not concerned about what my problems are. Right. It's time to play. Look, like, you don't care about about dad, what dad want to do. Get over here. <laughs> All right, then I'm See, listen to me. You have to understand when you are obey, it's all about you. You don't listen to me. He has absolutely no conscience. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm messing up your plan. No, it's about what I want. Right. I'm hungry. You know, I ain't gonna lie to you. When I first, my granddaughter, if I ever was alone with her, and I only, you know, uh, most time it would be on Mondays, I would get some time with her. It just be her. You know, I, I'm, I mean, I, I'm. I didn't. I, how could you go to the bathroom when your granddaughter's up? <laughs> no, I mean, like I just felt like I had to give her my undivided attention, twenty-four seven. There's no bathroom breaks. When she go to sleep, you can go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, me and my wife got them kids in that crib. She go. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot my grandson in that crib like he a basketball. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm telling you, what, what, what you got? Listen, listen to me. Those kids don't care nothing about your name. Right. They don't care nothing about nobody. No, you got to fix dinner. They don't care nothing about bills. 
Life is about me and what I want and when I want it. Don't tell me to be quiet because we're on a plane. Give me something to drink and give it to me now. <laughs> ah! <laughs> no. See, and Christians are babes. You change who you are because you didn't get what you want. You sit there acting like a big baby because you didn't get what you want. The devil is. But now you want to be a leader in God's house. You can't preach to people and you crying. You can't preach to people and you all upset and discombobulated. Cause you got to be able to not get what you want and still live out your purpose. That's true. Amen. You know a real man is content with no money, no new shoes, no new outfit, as long as those he's responsible for is one of them. Man, they brag about it. Man, I still got that same ten. Man, my wife, she took the money for half. Yeah, now, punks don't understand that. I thought she had a job. She ain't got no job. No, real men think different. And that's the level of maturity. Now, I'm about to say something. You take it any kind of way you want. You're an idiot for getting involved with any man that don't take care of his children. Right. I said you're an idiot. Amen, amen. You say you got a child well? Yeah, he's in Yugoslavia. <laughs> so that exempt you from being a man? Right. No, see, see, most time you get tangled up in stuff, you're not paying attention to the basic thing. Right. When you when you get involved with a babe, expect that babe to be about themselves, not you. A man has to be very in. There's a certain level of immaturity to ignore your responsibility. Right. It don't matter what your upbringing was. My daddy was a drunk. My daddy didn't pay no rent. My daddy had my mom about to be living on the streets. My daddy was not. You know what my mother used to tell me? My mother used to, I used to go up upstate New York with my grandmother, and my mother used to tell me, she said, when you go up there, Watch your Uncle Walter, both of them, and your Uncle Sherman. Well, I didn't. I never really got the opportunity to be around my Uncle Walter and my Uncle Sherman as much, but I always would be at my Aunt Susie's house and saw my Uncle Walter. And my Uncle Walter, he did the shopping. Every Friday, he pulled up with a station wagon full of food. And I saw him as the provider. See, let me tell you something. I can sit all day and make excuses about what my daddy did to me. But I saw what a man was. And I needed it and implemented it into my life. Amen. There is no excuse for you to fail as a man. Amen. Your pride stopped you from learning from other men because you think you're in competition. Right. Right. True. Your pride and your ego. You know, I meet men all the time that want to compete. You can't compete with what God is doing in my life. You see houses and cars, but that's not what's producing houses and cars. It's my relationship with God. Amen. Amen. You should be learning when you're trying to compete. Amen. I know it sounds arrogant. I know you may not like it, but I can teach you something. Amen. I can teach you what it's going to take to have a real marriage. Amen. I can teach you that God ain't coming into your marriage because you're too soft. You just a baby. You're not willing to weather the storm. Oh, let me tell you something. Ain't nothing in all the world harder for a man than to be quiet when your wife acting a fool somehow, some way. That devil say, turn the whole house upside down. Pick the cake up, throw it out in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> to suppress what the devil is telling you because I got to be the one to bring peace in. When yelling got to stop in the house, it got to stop start with you. When the devil tell you, if you don't act like I tell you, you're going to be a punk. And God say, if you act like I tell you, you're going to be a leader in this house. And you'll be a man by my definition. I want you to go in there like you got good sense. State what the problem is. And then change the conversation like you never said. You can't listen to me. You can't expect victory and you're not willing to mature. Amen. 
And everybody you see with a happy marriage, you try to find fault in it. Do you know if you find fault in anything God is doing, you know he won't do it for you? If you want to have victory, you got to allow God to do something through you. There are people you're responsible for, God got to do things through you. You have no business with a brand new pair of shoes. And your children don't have all their needs, man. Amen. Why do you think God made duct tape? <laughs> duct tape them boots and get your butt out there. And listen to me. The more you mature that God can do something through you, because you do know those are God's children. You're just a steward. Yes. Yeah. Or you're gonna have, you're gonna be held accountable for the lack of leadership that you display. Amen. Mothers running around looking like God knows what in the face of people, and then gonna talk about tell God, God, I want you to have your way in my life, child. What do you look who you was in front of them? Right. You know your children know you. Y'all sitting up there saying, just do what I say, not as I do. They know you. Right. You know, I'm telling my wife, the guy, I've learned so much from the men that I hang out with, those that want to be married, those that are successful. You saw them, you would think they're successful, and pretty much they can have multiple choice of women. But you know, much ain't changed when a man want to settle down. I've never met a real man that said, man, I just want to marry somebody with a nice round behind. That's my desire. I've never met a woman. Or I've seen men go after women with round behinds, but they're not going after them because they want to get married. They want to play doctor, but I'm not looking to go to medical school now. I'm going to tell y'all something. Now, this ain't, I ain't throwing off on nobody. This opened my eyes to something. This opened up my eyes to something. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just sharing with you. You can do what you want with it. It's not in the Bible, but it's free of charge. I was talking to one of my, my, my buddies, and he said to me, he said, I see how a woman, now, now hear the whole story now. Okay. All right? He said, I, if, if a woman has a child, he said, I judge her based on how, if she's a single mother, I judge her based on how she treats her children. The care she gives to her children. I'm about to throw something at you now. I never saw this. And he said, if a mother got a son and a tongue ring, I would never touch that. Shut up. I never. Now, y'all don't get mad at me. I know some of y'all, whatever you got in your mouth is in your mouth, so don't come at me. I never, this guy, he ain't no preacher. He ain't no bishop. He ain't no, he sees something deeper than what us church happen for. He said, if a mother's willing to show her son how good she is at that, you know that thing resonated? I don't want my kids. I've been married over 30 years. I don't want my kids to know how freaky their mom is. No, seriously. But if you're willing to tell your son that this is what mommy do, and mommy do it good, Mama's a professional at like this. <laughs> I never saw that. He said, man, I would never marry a woman with a tongue ring and a song. I've never in all my life gone, I've never heard that before. I know what a tongue ring is for. You know what a tongue ring is for. I know y'all gonna say it's mine, it's for style, but it, but it, 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 it what, what, what do you want to call it? <laughs> no, it has purpose. I never saw that. See, and I'm about to tell you something. Sometimes you're not conscious of what's going through you. You're just playing something. Now, when your child get old enough to understand what that's for. <laughs> let me leave that alone. I see some of you. Let me get up because I see you. Just, I'm sorry. It ain't in the Bible. It ain't in the Bible. So y'all can do what you want to do. Get, you, get, you, get whatever you need. You know, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> when God is doing something through you, everything got to be checked by God. Right, yeah. I need to make sure what I pass to to my children is acceptable unto God. Yes. It don't have. Listen to me. Everything that feel good, look good, don't mean God is pleased with. It. That is true. Amen. That's true. Oh boy. Let me get through this. 
asking God to do things through you is, listen, through you is, is not only maturity, but it is the heart of an ambassador. You can't represent God unless you're willing to allow God to work through you. Amen. Some of y'all are too selfish to even say good morning. Some of y'all just so stuck on you, your day, what you got to do, you don't care nothing about nobody else. Amen. Your morning affirmation, declaration, whatever you call it, is all about you and your day. How much is it, Lord, use me, yes. that the devil don't win yes. in my co-worker's life? Yes. Yes. God needs you to be a conduit for him. One takes and consumes, the other one feeds and gives. You want to celebrate the cross? Want to celebrate his resurrection? Then be, celebrate by doing what it means. Give something. Mm -hmm. Let somebody else's life be better because of you. Amen. Be a blessing to someone. Let someone smile when they see you. If I fall dead today, people ain't going to be crying just because, you know, I, he was funny. Right. Oh, there's people going to be crying. So I don't know how I'm going to feed my family. You need to have purpose in your life. Amen. Amen. That God used it. Most of y'all, y'all, I'm telling you, y'all too caught up in this money. Too much got to come to you for anything to go through you. Right, right, right. That's true. It's all about you, your car, your house. You got too many needs in before God. You are paid. But then you expect God to trust you with a million dollars. God ain't gonna get none of that. The devil tell you, you know, you, ain't, you don't make enough to do what God said. Mm -hmm. To do what God said, you got to make this much. Now, he talking. He talking because he got, he got that. But you ain't got that, so don't you listen to God. When you get it, then you listen to him. Mm -hmm. No! The moment you start letting God do things through you, the less important what you got matters. Mm -hmm. True. Now, I do have nice things. I can't help that. I really can't. You know, it, it's just it's just how God made me. My wife and I, we went into the to the China so we went in there to get plates and stuff. It, it, you ain't never got the question. I'm going. I'm immediately attracted to the most expensive things in the store. Mm -hmm. It's just something in me. Like I come from the streets of Brooklyn. Ain't nobody tell me nothing about no two hundred dollar plates. One plate, two hundred dollars. No man, that's the devil. But when I walk in the store, immediately I'm attracted to that thing that it's just something about me to like nice things. Now hear what you gotta do. I've never allowed what I like to interfere with God telling me to do. Amen. Amen. That's right. Can I tell you something? You will never catch the money that belongs to you on my feet. Amen. Amen. You'll never catch the money that belongs to your children on my back. Amen. God can trust me. Amen. God can trust. I know right now God making me, I, you know, I have to make millions to do what I need to do in kiss. Amen. And that don't mean nobody contact me. No, don't, do it. don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to your family. I will humiliate you. I'm telling you, don't contact me. People think when God starts doing things to me, that's his glory. If only when he's doing it through you, that's his glory. Yeah. You know, I've never once, this is the God of the truth, I've never once thought it was a mistake to give the cash money. Now, we lost, I can't remember that house. I don't know if it foreclosed or if it sold in time. But we uh, foreclosed, I think. We took the money out to, so that we could take the cash and buy this church building. I never thought it was a mistake. I never. I never thought it was a mistake. I never look back and say, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe we did that. I never did. I never bought something. There are things I bought at this church I can't even remember. It just belonged to the church. Amen. Some of you do the same thing. You can't try to remember every little thing you bought. Like, right. I don't know what that comes from. I don't know. But if it belongs, God do things through you, you don't have ownership of that. When God do things, listen to me, that sheep are always crying for themselves. You know, a sheep needs a shepherd. They can't survive on their own. True. When I look in this ministry, I'm going to tell you what makes me glad. is the lions that walk around. Amen. 
If I'm going to war, I'd rather have one lion than a thousand sheep. Amen. Amen. If I got to get into a fight, give me the lion any day. Amen. And you have all 10,000 of them sheep. I told you all this, this veterinarian. No, he wasn't a veterinarian. Sorry. He was a man. He had a dog. It was one of the big pit bulls. His dog came back to the house. He was bleeding and, you know, hurt and real bad. He threw his dog into the truck, took the dog to the vet, to the dog hospital, and they were stitching him up. The dog had to stay. So when he got back home, he followed the trail of the blood that his dog was bleeding. This is, this is not like a make me feel good story. This is the truth. He followed the trail. He said when he followed the trail, there was, was it six coyotes? Six coyotes dead. The dog was in a fight. Yes. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. When I got to get into a fight, I don't need nobody hollering, what right. happened? Here he come. I tell my wife this all the time. My wife, when it comes to streets, just, just get out of the way. Get in the car, lock the door. I'm going to be all right. Please don't get out. Tell my, get out of here. Now we ain't got no car. At least if you stay in the car with it running. But there's just certain things that just come natural to me. Because I'm from the show. I know how to survive. But when I don't need nobody hollering and screaming, I need somebody to know what to do. If we in a fight and they jump in front of the car to stop us, I don't need you to blow your horn. You understand? See, God needs people that's going to... See, you don't need a lot of when you got the right thing. Amen. Amen. I don't, need, I don't run with punks. I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't run with, punks. I don't run with people that sitting around waiting for somebody to come help you. No, you got to... Listen, you got to be able to handle your own. Or, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. Don't be sitting up there talking about they coming after us. No, they coming after you. I'm gonna be all right. If you going to, if you gonna win in the earth, you got to be a lion. I come to protect. I don't need to be protected. I don't, I'm not the one talking about some. I, I, you know, I, I don't. You know, pastor told me he, when I put something up about some pastor coming to church and say boo or something. He got a gun or something like that. And the, the pastor said, we pray that God protects the house. Well, you know, you know that's kind of, that's punkish to me. No, because I need God to do his part, but he ain't even me, oh God. A Peter spirit. Come on now. Peter didn't chop the man's head off. Peter gave the man a wall. Oh, he was skilled with a soul. Do you hear me? Some of y'all just got a gun. You're going to kill yourself with it. <laughs> no, God start doing things through you. You become a protector. Sheep need protection. Amen. You need somebody to protect you. My, my wife needs to be protected. Amen. We were dropping a work truck off at a, at a place. She drive up in this dark parking lot and just park. No, you, you don't stop the car until I'm in a position to get up out of here. See, that don't make no good sense to y'all. Y'all just, well, well, yeah. I'm always thinking the worst. Listen to me. When you start becoming a protector, it ain't about you. It ain't about, I'm all right. See, some of y'all ain't good for nothing but bottles. That's all you, that's all you can get is a bottle. Because it's all about you. I ain't put my life on the line with nobody. Call the police. <laughs> You'll beat your wife up before you jump on the one that's coming out. I don't understand y'all. If God wants to do something through you, you got to accept the responsibility that comes with it. I got to deny myself. Right. Ain't nobody coming up in that house to do nothing to my wife. Nobody. Nobody. I don't care what the color of your badge is. I don't care. Nobody. In order for that to happen, I must be deceased. There are many that talk that game, but they ain't willing to back that up. 
It's all about you. You got to be protected. You want them to be in the closet. Shame. Tell me, he in the house. The son, where your wife? Mm -hmm. Where are you? In the closet. In the basement. <laughs> no, listen to me. See, I'm trying to bring something to you. The more God can trust to get through you, the more of a warrior you need to be. Amen. You need to be a person that's willing to put your life on the line for somebody else. Amen. I'm not talking about your manhood right now. I'm just talking about you want to be a supplier. To the kingdom of God, you can't be a pump and a supplier to the kingdom. Stand up for something. Suffer for something. Father, thank you for your children that have come to this place to get more of you. I pray, God, that they mature in you. That you can do things through them. And that they accept the responsibility. It's not about being macho. It's not about an image. It's about the trueness of being a leader. Yes. That a leader provides and protects. A leader is not selfish. A leader is not about themselves. Yes. A leader is a warrior at heart. Yes. Father, give us what we need. That we will be your true ambassadors in the earth. Representing you in every aspect. God, you do it. We'll give you the praise and the glory. Jesus said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping here at the Temple of Deliverance.